My name is Saad Kandirian. I'm a fellow in hematology and oncology at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, an assistant professor of medicine and oncology at the Mayo Clinic College of Medicine. I'll be discussing a recent paper entitled Acute Lymphoblastic Leukemia in Adolescents and Young Adults from Genomics to the Clinics. The senior author of this paper is Dr. Mark Lutzo. Acute lymphoblastic leukemia in adolescents and young adults represents a unique and challenging disease entity for multiple reasons. Despite the recent improvement in survival in this population, it's still lagging behind compared to the excellent cure rates in pediatric ALL. A recent analysis of the SEER database showed that the five-year survival in this population was only 63% compared to 87% in children up to 15 years of age. The reasons for this significant difference in survival are complex and not fully understood. There are substantial differences in disease biology, response to chemotherapy, role of allogeneic stem cell transplantation, and novel therapy in this group. Several biological differences between pediatric ALL and ALL in adolescents and young adults have been described. First of all, genetic alterations associated with good prognosis, such as hyperdiploidy and translocation 1221, decrease in frequency with age, while poor risk cytogenetics increase in prevalence. In addition to that, even good risk cytogenetics such as hyperdiploidy, are associated with inferior outcomes in adolescents and young adults compared to their counterpart in children. Patients between 15 and 30 years of age have higher rates of minimal residual disease burden after chemotherapy compared to children. There is also higher incidence of early precursor T-cell ALL in adolescents and young adults, which is a newly defined entity characterized by inferior outcomes and poor response to chemotherapy. Several studies have reported the genomic profiling in, pe in pediatric patients with ALL. While no focused genomic analysis of adolescents and young adults has been performed, these patients were frequently included in pediatric studies. Their genetic profile was similar to patients with high-risk ALL. For example, JAK mutation, intrachromosomal amplification of chromosome 21, and BCR ABL-like ALL were frequent findings. In addition to the difference in biology between pediatric ALL and ALL in adolescents and young adults, several analyses have shown survival benefits when these patients are treated on pediatric intense compared to adult protocols. The reasons for this are not clear and likely to be multifactorial, including earlier introduction of CNS-directed therapy in pediatric protocols, the use of more intense chemotherapy, and higher rates of compliance when adolescents are treated on pediatric protocols under their parents' supervision. The role of allogeneic stem cell transplantation in adolescents and young adults with ALL is also controversial. There have been no prospective trials addressing this group, and subgroup analyses from ALL transplant trials have been controversial. And finally, with the emergence of novel therapies in adult ALL, adolescents and young adults are frequently included in these clinical trials. They seem to experience benefit from such approaches. For example, they benefited the most from adding rituximab in pre-BALL. In early studies, inotuzumab, ozogamiacin, clofarabine, and neralabine have all shown to have activity in early clinical trials in adolescents and young adults.